Hello viewers. Here we have another telephone, a unit in telephone. This is a rather uncommon model. I got this one on the internet. I saw the listing up a long time ago and they wanted about $75 for it. And uh, I just can't justify spending $75 on something I don't need. This knife is really dull. So anyway, so I, I kept watching the listing. And the other day, I went down to 30 which is still kind of a lot for a cordless phone, but given the rarity of the model, I thought it was worthwhile. So I got it. And here it is. I now have a complete set of this telephone because I have a box with the other one but no manual. This one I got the manual for. This is in fact, oh I got the quick start guide too. This is in fact the EWCI 936 weather telephone. Pretty interesting model. Oh it's actually a single language. I thought that was thick enough to have two languages in there. Now we have the quick start guide. Oh, it's one of those things I'm not going to open that up because it's going to take forever to close it again. Okay, so now let's get to the telephone itself. Oh, this looks like it was packed surprisingly well. Now this one I'll probably use because it was uh, used pretty heavily in its prior life and it's not in the greatest of condition. As you can see it is very heavily yellowed. Um, although um, wasn't abused. There's no, you know, signs of heavy damage or anything. Probably was just situated in a sunny room. Let's see here. We have the battery from 2004. BYD. Those are kind of a hit or miss. We'll find out if that works in a moment. Here's the base unit, similarly as yellowed, which in all honesty is fine because now I don't feel bad about using it in my bedroom, which is very sunny. Sensor, which has obviously spent the majority of its life outside, so again I don't feel bad putting it back inside. And the power adapter. Wow, this really was packed quite nicely. Have to uh, send them a note of appreciation. Okay. Now, unfortunately, can't actually test it because I only have one phone line right now because my phone modem broke. So we're not doing any test calls, but we'll power it up and see if it'll work. Mm, I'm not understanding how this comes out of the thing here. If I recall correctly, the other one I, I tested, probably on video as well, made a fool out of me. And it looks like this one is going to do the same. I'm going to look in the manual here and see if it shows how to open it. Oh, I see what's happened here. The screw uh, comes out 
preventing it from... Yeah, I see what's going on. That's exactly what I remember. This is going to be very interesting. That's the culprit of the issue right there. That screw is not screwed in all the way and it's catching on the... There we go, on the top. Okay. Oh, that closed very nicely. Usually I struggle with those things. Okay, so let's get the power adapter plugged in. My power bar is is live. I don't recall if it is or not. We'll find out in a minute. Yep, it is. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up here and I'm gonna do the forbidden of putting in different kinds of batteries, but it's only for testing purposes. I don't think anything detrimental is going to happen over the course of three or four minutes while we test this. I'm going to press the check battery button and it looks like they're good and it has already registered. Now it's reading 62 degrees indoors and while it's certainly cold today um, it's not 62 degrees although this feels pretty cold so that may just be residual um, from being out in the cold when it was delivered. Okay, that does not have a charge, so I'll stick that on there and let's see if it comes up. It is indicating that it's taking a charge, but it's not um, actually doing so. So that battery may be spoiled, which is not all that surprising. Just out of curiosity, let me look at the other thermometer in here and see what the temperature is. According to this thermometer, it is 66.9 degrees, which is not what either of these units are reading, ironically enough. I don't know where the sensor is on this thing. Maybe it's right there, I'm not entirely sure. Either way, this is a telephone, it's not going to be a unit of precision, but I would certainly think that the error level should be less than 6 degrees, but Oh well. I don't think my other one read, read all that inaccurately. Now it's doing something. It's making a hissing sound. That's not really what I'd like to hear. I have another battery. It's not charged up. 
but I know it's a good battery. I think we're going to take this battery and uh, toss it into the recycling box because it's of no use to us or anybody else really for that matter unless you're a scrapper of some type. And we're going to plug this one in. And this one is disgusting, but it should at least let us test this telephone. Really got to get this cleaned. Okay. Yeah, this doesn't have a charge. See, it's taking a charge now. Well, anyway, so, um... This is working, so I'm going to take the batteries out, and we'll just say that this works. And... Yeah, okay. I'm going to put the screw in all the way so we don't have another fiasco with not being able to get it open. Okay, we have the other um, call ID is empty. I don't have a phone line down here because the thing isn't working, so we can't even do a test call. But um, anyways, they said it works. Oh, the battery just gave up, but they said it works. It seems to be showing all signs of functioning, so I have no reason to not believe that. So we're gonna do a refurbishing on this in the near future and then uh, I'll probably put this into use maybe in the bedroom because uh, the alarm and everything is kind of practical for the bedroom so thank you for watching comment subscribe and out